A day may come when the courage of men fails, when we forsake our friends and break all bonds of fellowship. But it is not this day. An hour of wolves and shattered shields when the age of men comes crashing down. But it is not this day. This day we fight by all that you hold dear on this good earth. I bid you stand, men of the West! Hello, everybody. I'm The Last Pretender. And uh, you are watching the very beginning of our M.A. Man Redemption series. Um, this is going to be a national overview, though I'm probably just going to do the units this video and do another video where I actually go over the commanders. The reason being is that there's quite a bit to go over and I want to be thorough. Um, and I don't want this video to go on forever. So, uh, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and start talking about man. Uh, first, we look at this unit card here, and we or this nation card, and you can see there's a little bit of the sort of lore of man. Uh, and you know, leave a comment if you're interested in Dominion's lore. You want me to do a lore video? Because I'll do a I'll do an MA Man lore video. I think MA Man has you know. They're kind of based on sort of British Isles and, and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm told that there's, I mean, there's, there's also a little bit of Wheel of Time kind of influence going on, but uh, there's a lot going on with like, they're kind of the sequel nation to Tyr Nanog in early age. So uh, let me know and uh, I'll talk about them and uh, the Tuatha and that sort of thing. Anyway, uh, so their race is humans. That's their first obvious weakness. Real bummer there. Uh, militarily, you got infantry, longbowmen, knights, and special troops of Avalon. Very good military for the most part. I would say that their military is quite good. Uh, quite a good military. Magic-wise, uh, nature and air are very strong, uh, very strong schools. They, uh, they could use a, a little bit more diversity, but water and earth are pretty good, and, uh, that's very helpful as well. They also can get a, a, a splash of fire. Not mentioned here. A little splash of fire. These Logrian wise men can get that. Uh, their priests are weak, um, but there are ways to kind of get around that with their spell singing capacity and that sort of thing. And they have the divinely inspired researchers, and specifically the monk has that, uh, which again we'll talk about whenever we get into the commanders. Standard forts and temples that are only going to cost you 200 gold. Uh, they're kind of a bland, vanilla kind of nation. They're kind of plain Jane kind of thing with a little bit of a little bit of stuff here and there that kind of separates them that makes them a little bit better. Um, they're a pretty good nation. I would even say they're a very good nation if it wasn't for the fact that they're an MA where there's a million nations and some of them are quite cancerous. But a decent nation. A good nation to start whenever you're, you're kind of learning everything for the first time because they are kind of your baseline sort of nation. Uh, and they let you play with uh, uh, communions that are kind of a little less risky and that sort of thing. So uh, a good nation. I like, I like man. Now, let's hop into the units. So first, I'm going to talk about the three units that you'll never use. The first one is going to be your Long Green Slingers. Why are you never going to use these? The shortest version is that uh, Long Bowmen are much better. The longer answer is that Slings have short range of 30. The damage of 8. Bludgeoning is not very good, particularly in MA. In EA, it would be a lot better because in EA, uh, a lot less units are going to have helmets on and such. But in Middle Ages, you're going to see a lot more units wearing helmets like these guys are wearing half helmets that have 18 protection eight damage is never going to get through 18 protection so uh they're they're cheap but not like super cheap right like i mean compared to one more gold you can get a longbowman no so uh bad attack skill defense skill 10 protection is nice it's, you know it's okay for a ranged unit but really they have eight just with a nice helmet but uh, I really don't don't like them uh, and I never use them ever and uh, if you know a reason that you would use these units leave a comment below and I'll, I'll probably still disagree with you but uh, maybe you'll convince me uh, then we've got these two spear units here again I never use them and a big part of it is just because for 10 gold for two or three more gold you can get like a log rain warrior or like a landless knight or a forester and they're much better uh, these guys do not do nearly enough damage with only 13. Piercing damage is nice, but it's not really enough. The defense skill of 13 is okay. Protection of 9 is real weak. 
right? You're only looking at an eight in the body. So, eh. um, yeah, I, I just kind of feel like these guys are not as good as your other options for infantry units. And that goes as well uh, for the long spear. Uh, if I had to choose between the two, most of the time I'd probably use the spearman. Uh, the, the extra length on the long spear I don't think always comes into play. Um, whereas, uh, I don't know. I kind of like the fact that you can, uh, spend a, a few, a, a little fewer resources to get your spearmen, but they're pretty equal and neither are very good. I never recruit these three units. Now let's talk about our three specialty units that we have. Now I say specialty units, there are units that are, you would only recruit in special circumstances. So let's go through them. Uh, I'll probably start with the least special one, which is the Walgreen Cavalry. Why would you recruit them? Well, you don't want them to be a mainstay or anything like that because they're really not that great of fighters. Their stats are not really justifying how much they cost at 25 gold. They're a little on the expensive side and they don't have the stats to back it up. I mean, 11, 11 attack skill and 14 defense skill is okay, but having 12 protection does not justify a 25 gold purchase in my opinion and uh their light lance is only doing 14 damage now i do believe yeah they do get a charge bonus and that's the special reason that you would get these guys because what you would do is is you would grab a handful of these dudes put them on the flank and use them as shock cavalry in hopes that an attack rear can get into that back line that's what they're good for and you don't have naturally cav within your army the problem is is that you probably are going to have cav within your army so you're probably never going to recruit these guys again but if your cab are dead or you don't have any with you, you can grab these dudes and they can be recruited outside of forts. So maybe if you're moving over to go into a defensive posture, uh, you can kind of recruit these as you move along the way. Pick up some of them and put them on a flank as a sort of special, special force to kind of try and get at the enemy's rear. That's what I would use them for. I don't use these units in this playthrough either, I'll be honest with you. The next specialty unit is going to be the Tower Guard. The Tower Guard is a pretty decent unit, okay? The protection's not great. Again, we're only looking at 12 in the body. Much cheaper though, obviously 12 gold. Reasonable price for 11 attack skill, 14 defense skill. Broad score doing 16 damage isn't bad. 16 damage is okay. Um, but you have, again, better options. I, I think you have much better options available to you as MA Man uh, whenever it comes to your infantry. Maybe not much better, but better options whenever it comes to MA Man. Um, morale's only 11 but uh the thing that makes this unit pretty good is their siege defense um the fact that they get a castle defense bonus um is the kind of specialty reason that you might be recruiting these guys other over other units so what instance would you recruit them well the time i would recruit them is if i don't have like an army that i can really use to babysit a fort particularly a throned fort um, I might recruit these dudes just so that they can hold out until a real army arrives, right? So I might be just constantly recruiting these dudes in a fort so that way if I do get attacked and sieged, these dudes can help prevent uh, the fort from cracking before reinforcements arrive. Uh, I do use them in this playthrough very, very minimally. Um, and really I just do it just to say I used all my units basically. <laughs> Um, I really, there's really not a lot of other great reasons I use them. I just use them just to be like, hey, I used a different unit. Isn't that neat? So, that's the tower guard. Now, a really good specialty unit is your Borster. This is a unit that I, I don't use also in this game, but I should have. And I'll talk about what I should have done. So, let's talk about the things that these guys are good for. Um, the biggest thing that they're good for, well, not the biggest thing, but one of the things that they're good for is giant slayers. They're pretty good giant slayers. Why? They're ambidextrous, okay, which is pretty good. Uh, that's going to decrease the, the penalty for using an offhand attack. And they've got a good attack density, right? They've got the axe and the dagger. So you can get three of these dudes in a square. And so with two attacks, they're going to have an attack density of six. Pretty good. And the damage is okay. The 14 piercing is not great, but the 18 slashing is quite good. Um, 10 attack skills, not bad. Um, you know, you can mass these up very quickly, recruit them outside of forts. These are good units, and they have a short bow so that the guys in the back lines can still do something. Uh, they cost some gold. 
a uh, reasonable amount. Very, very cheap on resources. Uh, not so much on recruitment. So they're good giant slayers because you can have that good attack density. Now they're going to get killed in droves because they have weak defense skill and low protection. But uh, against like, you know, the Ishtar giants or something like that, these guys can be quite helpful in burning them down. So I really like them for that. Um, they're also going to... Um, they're going to get a really good harass penalty going because they're attack density. Good unit. I like them a lot. Uh, but what else are they good for? Well, this is the big thing that I don't use them for that I really should have. And I just, I just didn't do it. I was a bad, bad boy. Which is that they are good for raiding. Uh, what you would do is you would grab, I believe, a Warden of Avalon. You could do a Mother of Avalon too, though I prefer the Warden for the morale bo boost because that AD leadership. Um, you can see that they cost very similar. I like to get Lord Wardens and uh, get like 20. I, I, I don't want to use the uh, the monks and stuff because they have weak leadership of 10. Same thing with these ladies. These ladies can't stealth. Never mind. These dudes I meant uh, who also only have 10 leadership. I'd rather have a little bit more of a leadership bo bonus and get like at least 20 foresters. 10 or 15, I kind of feel like attrition becomes a real issue. But at 20, you're pretty good and you can raid pretty consistently. And you're going to be able to take out provinces. What you do is you basically create an elf, right? You, you load up your Lord Wardens who also have stealth. And you send them to just do some raiding. Uh, you can recruit these dudes outside of a fort. So you don't have to eat up your recruitment turns. Um, and get these units instead of good fighting units. So I really like the, uh, the Forester for that. And I feel bad that I didn't really use them sufficiently. I'm still kicking myself for that. But that's, uh, that's, that's the Forester. Uh, we talked about the Lecav, we talked about the Tower Guard. Let's go into our meat and potatoes units. These are going to be our main units who are going to be our mainstay. Now, there's a couple different ways you can actually build out your army. First, I'll talk about the most common, which is to get a shitload of, log of uh, longbowmen. The longbowmen are very good units. They're very good. They've got great range, much better. I mean, if you recall, the Slinger only has 30 range. These guys have 45. One of the longest range uh, missile units in the game. You're looking at 45 uh, uh, range. 12 piercing damage is pretty good. And this 12 piercing damage is even uh, it's even a little bit better than you'd think. Because the longbow does 9 damage plus a third of a wielder's strength. And these guys don't have a 10 strength, they have an 11. And that 11 matters because it means that if you cast Strength of Giants on these dudes, it bumps them up to 15. So instead of getting a plus 1, getting them up to 13, they actually get a plus 2, getting up to 14 damage pretty nice another thing is these guys can actually fight they're cheap at 10 gold right and they can fight they've got a 10 attack skill an 11 defense skill and they've got a short sword that does 16 damage it can be piercing i really hope you cannot hear my neighbors outside but um pretty good unit quite a good unit uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of them uh these short swords do good damage these guys are good. Uh, in fact, most people would say this is the main unit you should use in man. This should be your meat and potatoes. Um, I'm not 100% convinced of that, and I'll go over why in a bit, but this is an excellent unit. Um, a lot of people like to use that in conjunction with the Knight of Man. But first, let me talk for a moment about the weakness in this unit. And there are two in particular. Well, three, really. The first unit, the first thing that makes them weaker is their morale. Their morale is only at 10. I like to have a little bit better morale units for my mainline troops. Uh, wailing winds late game is going to become an issue. Um, there are ways to mitigate that, but I would like to have a little bit better morale. Even one point I would I would like. Um, and their protection sucks. A five protection is really weak. I would like to have a little bit better protection than that. There are ways to buff up units protection and everything like that, I know. Um, but oof. Five protection is not a lot. Uh, Ten hit points is on the lower end. A lot of your units are going to end up having 12. Uh, a lot of your other options have 12. So that's kind of unfortunate. So the big one is protection, morale, and then the third and final one is that they're ranged units. Yes, they can fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat if they have to, but that's not what they're good at. They're good at being ranged units and shooting you from afar. And the problem with that is that Arrowfind is a spell. And Arrowfind makes these guys 10,000 times worse. They just become exponentially worse because they just, I mean, they cut you, they cut down your damage output by like 70% or something. 
I think Aerofend is an 80. I think it cuts you down by 80%, but it might be 70 or 75. But it just devastates your army. And it kind of means that if you go, man, and you go into longbows, um, late game you're going to suffer a lot. But early game, you're going to want to kind of pick your battles based on whether or not your opponent has access to air. Like, that's actually going to be an important thing to think about. And that kind of constrains you about how you go to war and who you go to war against. So that lack of flexibility makes me shy away from the longbowmen. Again, an excellent unit. And like early game, man, if you're going to war against a nation that doesn't have, that doesn't have very good, uh, very good defense, uh, very good air magic and can't cast Aerofend, these guys can be devastating just i mean they'll just they'll just roll up an insta win a war in certain instances uh the other thing too is that the 12 damage even though it's piercing is not a lot right a lot of stuff is going to have at least 20 protection right so you're gonna you're gonna knock it down to like 16 or so but you're still looking at a four point gap right you mean you know these a lot of nations have over 20 but like, let's say you've got like a 16 or 15 even uh, protection that you've knocked it down from using the longbow. Like you're still looking at a three point gap for damage output. And so you're really not gonna do a ton. And if you stack on top of that arrowfin, these guys do nothing. They're gonna do so little in that instance. And I just kind of feel like that makes them like, like these guys are so good in the right situation, but in the wrong situation, I feel like they suffer tremendously more than your other options. And so I actually tend to shy away from them. But again, an excellent unit. And I do not think you're wrong for using this as your meat and potatoes unit. I'm not going to. Uh, next unit we'll talk about is usually the unit that you use in Congress with the Longbowman. Uh, is you might use some Knights of Man. Knights of Man are an excellent unit. They're very elite. A very good front line. They've got that lance charge. It's going to hit like a truck. Um, you've got the broadsword. Uh, attack density of two or well, attack density of uh of four per square but two per unit uh they've got good protection at 18 great skills you're looking at a 12 attack skill a 16 defense skill you know hp's 12 which is okay good morale at 13 they're a little pricey 51 resources 46 recruitment points and 40 gold and you're costing 32 gold per year these guys are pricey okay they're expensive i'm not gonna lie to you but they're very elite. They're very good at fighting. These dudes, especially with their lance charges, can devastate. Devastate. Uh, you're going to want to have these guys, or at least the Knights of Avalon, in your army. You're going to want some cav. They're just that good. Now, as your meat and potatoes main core, I actually don't like them. And the reason is, is you can't siege with them. Because they're so expensive and recruitment is so limited with these guys... Uh, you're not going to be able to mass up sufficient to really siege down stuff effectively. And sieging down stuff effectively is one of man's really big strengths. One of their really good strengths is their ability to siege stuff down effectively. Um, and the Knight of Man is just bad at that. They're good as a supplement to your army. I, they are not a good primary force. So for example, they're exceedingly good if your primary force is just going to be longbows. And then you maintain a frontline core of Knights of Man. That's when they're really good. Um, they're not good as a primary way, as a primary unit of your army, but a good thing to make up with it. So, those are your Knights of Man. Your other two uh, meat and potatoes options are going to be the Logrian Warrior and the Landless Knight. So, the Logrian Warrior is a good boy, costs two more gold than your, uh, your Archer would, but I believe has the same seed strength, right? 12, uh, 1.2... So similar, so the same siege strength, but does cost two more gold. Okay, you can't recruit them up as much and mass them up as fiercely as you can the the uh, the longbowman. Which, by the way, is another reason the longbowman is so good is because he helps benefit you again um, on on CG. But anyway, you can still do very well with these guys. They've got the axe that does 19 damage, 11 attack skills, pretty good. 10 defense skills, okay. Protection's a little bit better at 12, okay. Um, and they have a shield, which is very helpful against ranged units with a parry value of four, which isn't bad. They've got a javelin that they can throw, right? And the javelin is quite good. 
It just does your strength. So Strength of Giants is going to pump this up to a 17 piercing, which is very good. Um, the axe hits like a truck, like I said before. 12 hit points, a little bit better morale. These guys are pretty good. These guys are pretty good. And honestly, I kind of like them better than a longbow. I would rather get these guys than a longbow. Um, these guys just, they hit harder. They, I mean... Being able to get a 17 range. I believe they are they have two javelins, I want to say. Yeah, ammunition to two. Not bad. Their attack skill, defense skill is pretty good. I mean, these are good units, man. These guys are pretty good. I have used these as my mainstay infantry unit, as my mainstay unit, and one game with it before. Uh, in fact, if you look at my, um, my, my first video I put out where I announced that I was going to be doing this series, um, it was showing replays from, from a game where this was my primary unit. And I, they did exceedingly well. They performed very well. Uh, this is a very good unit. Um, so, I like them. Now, the counter to them, not really the counter, but the other option to them is a new unit that didn't have, they didn't have this unit whenever I first played them uh, in my playthrough against Lucid Tactics, which is the Landless Knight. The Landless Knight's similar, uh, but he has some weaknesses. His broadsword doesn't do as much damage as the axe does, and he does not have a javelin. Uh, he also costs one more gold, and he costs a good bit more resources. When should you, when would you, why would you get this over the Logreen? Well, oh, also these guys are not, uh, another nice thing about the Logreen warrior is you can recruit them outside of forts. So if you're maybe making a defensive maneuver, right? Similar to what I mentioned with the cavalry unit. If you're moving an army to go be defensive and they're moving across land that isn't fortified, you can be recruiting troops as you move and picking them up whenever the army gets there. So that way you can kind of be bolstering your ranks a little bit. Uh, so this is a good unit for that. Uh, the Landless Knight, uh, you're looking at... Uh, so it costs more gold, doesn't do as much damage, doesn't have javelins. Why should I get it? Well, they're just tankier. They're just tankier. For one more gold, you get a much tankier unit. Instead of having a 12 protection, you're getting a 15. Okay, I know this says 16, but um, the body is kind of the main thing, and you're going to be looking at a 15 protection, right? The helmet is still an 18. Uh, their shield is much better with a six parry value, which is going to help you a lot against, uh, which is going to help you a lot against um, range units, and their defense skill, uh, if you incorporate the shield value, is going to be better as a 14 instead of a 10. Way better. Okay. Their morale is better with another plus one to it. These guys are just way beefier. These guys are way beefier. And you can still get a lot of them. The recruitment's a little bit slower, but you can still get a lot of them compared to the Knights of Man, and they're much gold cheaper. I mean, you can get three Knights of Man for one Knight of, uh, of uh, three Landless Knights for one Knight of Man, and your gold upkeep is gonna be less as well. Um, and considering the fact that uh, that's going to give you much more siege power, and it's going to, uh, and it's going to be cheaper for you gold-wise. I really like the Knight of Man. I like the tankiness, and one of the reasons I like the tankiness so much, and I'm going to go over this a little bit whenever I actually talk about the commanders, is because with that increased tankiness, buys you more time for your mages to do their work. Your mages are so important for man, and having good mages is a big deal. Um, I mean, you're, you're an air nation, okay? You're an air nation. That means that you have access to Thunderstrike, basically. And that is a big deal. Um, being able to have your, your, your units have more time to cast their spells is a big deal. Having tankier units whenever you have good mages is important. So, I'm actually going to be using the Landless Knight as my meat and potatoes unit. Uh... I think you could have just as easily used the Logrian Warrior. And I also think that using the Longbowman, especially if you're using the Longbowman in conjunction with the Knight of Man, is also viable. Uh, like I said, one of the good things about Man is they have a really good unit roster. And there's a lot of different things you can do with them. Uh, no matter what you're doing, I always recommend you get Cav. Um, because the Cav of Man is so good. Um, I, don't, I don't get very much ranged this game uh, because I'm concerned about Air Nations and a lot of nations that will get access to air. And so that's kind of my decision. Uh, maybe you disagree. 
like I said, most people firmly believe in the Longbowman, but I find I'm a little hesitant because of their lack of flexibility because of how good Arrowfend is. Oof. And their low protection does not make them good frontline fighters, even though they can do it with their stats being pretty good and their damage with their melee weapon being okay. Uh, again, Longbowman, Logrian Warrior, Landless Knight, Knight of Man, all of them are great units. All of them you can use them as the mainstay of your army, and I don't think you're doing anything wrong. I think you're perfectly justified in that. Now, let's talk about our cap only units. Now, the reason I didn't list these as sort of a mainstay or anything like that is because you're going to have to get one of these. Because your cap only units are so good, you, you just have to. You have to be massing up this unit because they're that much better than everything else. You need to get them. And you have two options. You have the Warden of Avalon and the Knight of Avalon. Again, I'm a bit of a contrarian. I do not believe the orthodoxy that the only option is Knight of Man, is Knight of Avalon. Now in this game, that is what I'm going to use, but I want to talk a little bit about the benefits of going either way. Effectively, what you're going to be talking about is you're going to be talking about magic versus gold. So what do I mean? I think that these guys are pretty pretty justifiable either way depending on how you do things so let's take a look at them so first the knight of avalon is an awesome unit it's freaking awesome it is a great unit 14 hit points got a little more meat on its bones it's got stunner stats 12 attack skill and 17 defense skill it's got 18 protection and that shit means 18 protection because it's wearing full chain mail okay it's got uh, attack density of three and it's got a lance charge that hits like a freight train okay it's got a magic weapon attack in the alicorn okay awesome unit and an undervalued ability is its recuperation it gets an arm chopped off no big deal he'll regrow it no big deal great unit great unit problem expensive as shit okay 60 gold 56 resources 48 recruitment points that's a lot that's a lot uh the actual income is 48 gold per year is how much you're spending on on maintaining one of these dudes this is an expensive fucking unit okay a very elite very good unit very expensive now you're gonna have to recruit these regardless early game because these are your best expanders these are by far your best expanders uh what you're actually gonna do early game is you're going to want to be getting Knights of Avalon in conjunction with uh, Knight Commanders of Avalon. The reason you want to get this combination is because the morale boost and the movement speed. So some people have suggested that you should get like a monk or something and use them to command your Knights of Avalon because you don't need that many. 10 leadership's enough. I actually don't like taking that hit to morale even though these guys have a stunner morale of 14. Um, what I really don't like is the movement. These guys have a map move of 16. These guys have a map move of 22. And these guys have a map move of 20. So you're going with an additional four map move, which is a big deal uh, if you end up going with the Knight Commander of Avalon. And so I like to use them to expand. I think that expanding with the uh, monks are not as good. I'll probably go into a little, I'll probably reiterate that again whenever I go over the commander units, but these guys are by far your best expanders. They have good recuperation. They have great stats. They have great morale but they're expensive as hell gold-wise. Now, if we compare the Warden of Avalon, it's kind of a lackluster sacred. Okay, he's got that 18 protection, which is good. Uh, 12 attack skill, which is okay. Defense skill 10, not great. He does have that length 2 sword, which is nice. Um, uh, 14 HP, which is good. He hits like a monster truck at 25 damage. Um, and that's really the best things about him. The bodyguard thing isn't really that useful most of the time. Uh, though I have played in games where I've used it extensively. Um, particularly when I was dealing with, like, uh, assassins from, like, Abyssia and such. Uh, but they're cheap. 26 gold, and their upkeep is only 10 because they're sacred. Right? 10 gold a year. Now, the big thing about these guys is if you're going to be getting them instead of your Knights of Avalon, if you're going to do it, I think you're justified, but you have to get magic weapons. You have to get magic weapons on the glass. Because the Knight Commander of Avalon is the only guy, I mean, the Knight Commander, the Knight of Avalon 
are the only units that have sick that have a uh, magic weapons and you need magic weapon attacks you just need it and having magic weapons on these guys makes them very good and that's all i would get i wouldn't get any other bless on these guys i would just get that you can put on an attack bless and all that kind of stuff but i think your your points are better spent on scales i think your points are better spent on scales than giving these guys defense and shock resist or whatever i think you're better off just giving them just giving them that magic weapons and that's good i mean in late game where presumably you're going to be casting stuff like weapons of sharpness on these dudes these dudes with weapons of sharpness and magic weapons kill almost everything there's almost no super combatant that survives this like that is devastating um these guys are great units they really are i think they're undervalued uh, i actually feel bad because uh the original game i was going to post um, I was using these guys and the Logrian uh, Warriors. Uh, I didn't post it. I, I won the game. I used those uh, battles in the, the announcement video. But uh, there was a lot of people who left that game. There was a, a, a large number of people who ended up leaving and just going AI. And so I didn't really want to include like a game that had a ton of AI people. And that really shifted the geopolitical situation because everybody piled on the AI. And then like some nations got really big without having to fight like a real war and stuff. And that sort of thing. So uh, I didn't show that. Um, but just giving these guys magic weapons, pretty good. And they're, you're going to be cheap. They're going to be cheap. And you're going to save a lot of gold and be able to spend more money on mages, on forts, on other units and recruiting in other places. I really like these guys. Now, the problem is, is, is I've already suggested in the in these two, is that these guys are not as elite, okay? And they're also, what they're costing you, what you're saving on gold, you're spending on magic, right? You have to spend points to go ahead and get you that foreign astral magic, so that that way, you can have a, a, a guy who has magic weapons. And even if, and that, that, that could have been spent to go towards something else, like Farcaster or, or, or Spell Penetration or whatever. So... Arcane Finesse, it's called. Uh, so, that's your expense. The other nice thing about this, though, is that if you do get magic weapons on these guys, early game, you can you can summon Kushi, which I believe require two nature. I believe they require two nature. And they cost you like six or seven uh, nature gems, and you recruit six or seven of these big dogs. And they'll be able to carry the magic weapon bless as well. And that can be really helpful. And you can just spit out an army that's pretty sizable early and mid game. Now, nature gems are very expensive, and, and as you get into later game, there's things you'd rather be spending those nature gems on. But it's nice to have that option and can really save you, and has saved me in games before. So I really like these guys, um, and I think that you are very justified. I'm not going to say it's better, uh, but I think you're very justified in getting them over the Knights of Avalon. In fact, I prefer it. I actually prefer these dudes over the Knights of Avalon, believe it or not. Uh, if you go down that road. But then again, right? You're spending nature gems. You're spending uh, design points on your pretender. When you could just go ahead and get a Knight of Adelon. And just spend more gold. I think there are trade-offs for both. And I think both are very justified. <sighs> so, that was a little bit of my spiel. Again, these guys are good units. Good protection. Good attack skill. Great morale. Okay, and they're going to carry a bless. That's pretty good. Hit points, good. These guys, super elite three attacks per guy so they're having double the attack density of your knights of avalon i mean of your uh, wardens of avalon they've got recuperation which is a severely undervalued ability they innately have the magic weapon attack okay great units they have this lance charge which hits like a monster truck but they're not going to get it every round like the knight of avalon will uh, uh no, the warden of avalon will they're only going to get it on their initial hit but still, hits very hard. They just cost more gold. And those are the units. Man. Uh, like I said, in this game, I'm going to be focusing primarily on using knight landless knights. They're going to be my mainstay meat and potatoes boys. They're pretty good. They can hold up in a fight. Hit for 17 damage. Pretty tanky dudes with uh, 15 protection. They're going to be my boys. And they've got that good shield. they got that good shield. Uh, I'm also going to be using my Knights of Avalon and not the Wardens of Avalon. So just a Knight Army. A Knight Army is what I'm going to be looking at. The Wardens of Avalon are very, very good. 
And they, their sprite looks super cool, too. Can we all admit that the sprite looks awesome? I really like whenever they swing and they do the thing. But, uh, yeah. They got the gangster capes, but we're going to be going with our unicorn voice. There's that. So, uh, that's what we're going to be doing for units. Anyway, that is my unit overview. I've been The Last Pretender, and I'll see you guys next time.